Hello everybody and welcome back to another Chivalry 2 livestream. Super excited to see everybody in the chat today. I know we missed last week, we had some server related issues, so uh, we decided to button down on that stream. But we're back this week. Uh, we have a little bit of a dev diary to share with you guys. We were going to talk about it last week, but we couldn't. Obvious reasons. So I'm going to show that to you guys first. Because uh, uh, it has some cool stuff coming up that'll be in our future updates if you haven't seen that yet. Um, you may have already seen it, you may have not, but I'm going to show it to you anyways. <laughs> Hang on, let's go! Kenosha cannot be conquered! The northern aggressors have opened the floodgates! Kenosha will swell! It sweeps anyway! We have officially doubled the content of the game in just one year. The game's grown in size and continues to grow, and all the features and content are being added for free. The amount of polish, balance, and fixes that we're going to be able to do and have been able to do so far has been a testament to how much we've reinvested in the chivalry. Chivalry was always about giving you that perfect medieval battlefield experience. And the horse was definitely the last big missing piece. Horses are huge war beasts that will turn the tide of battle. When you see a cavalry charge coming towards you, that brings out different emotions that you haven't necessarily got before in the game. When we started looking at horses, the lance was the very first thing at the top of our minds. It's the most iconic weapon of the medieval times. The lance is really a very powerful tool that players will need to learn to master, like all of our weapons, but it has the potential to be devastating. We have a range of new weapons coming out. We're bringing back some old classics from Shiv 1, and then you have weapons that are more inspired by the Denosian faction. There is the katars, which are these kind of scissor blades that sit on your hands. So super fast slicing style combat. What this latest update represents is the start of the new story. The invasion starts off with a map called the Breach of Bodwin, and Bodwin's bulwark is this ancient wall stronghold that stood between the two nations for the longest time. Tenoja is really the scholaristic and pragmatic approach where there's a lot of inspiration from Mesopotamian cultures like old Babylonians, Sumer, some Central Asian influences, Samarkand. So the Tenojan Imperial Army, they come over the desert and they kind of surprise the masons who are holding the stronghold. And they have to try and prevent them from scaling over the initial wall and then rushing through the city. You'll be taking these cannons and firing these cannonballs directly at this giant wall and getting to see it crumble in real time as pieces of the walls fall down. And the raising of Askandir is the masons' reaction to the bulwark invasion. The lighthouse on it's incredible and it leads to epic battles of trying to defend and attack. Leading on from that, you have this really long bridge where the players need to come in and force the other team back. And then finally, once you break through, you finally get to see Big Library. We're really excited to develop the story further and the different maps and areas of the world to go into. There's lots of different iconic settings and biomes that we want to evolve. Hippodrome is an upcoming map that we're really excited about. It's the tournament grounds in Tenojin Empire, and it's really set up to allow the horses to have these incredible experiences. There's the snow biome, and the great thing about snow is that it works really well with blood. You can just smother it and you see the war that took place there. So we're very excited artistically to be able to go into the frozen wastelands, and then also just as a canvas for players to paint upon. We're also finally bringing full cross-play social support to the game. What that means really is having no barriers on the social side for players to experience the game together. Cavalry! Forward! So the story of chivalry is not complete. We've now opened the next chapter with the introduction of Tenosia, widening the conflict, but there's still more stories to tell, more events to uncover. We really believe in the Shivery franchise and we think that there's more of the dream to be captured. And for us, we just won't stop until we're there. My favorite portion has been just constantly seeing all the funny clips posted from the community, getting that positive reinforcement that we're making something that people enjoy. It's great motivation. Hey, it's me again. 
what did you guys think? That was our summer dev diary. Uh, we, you know, we try to do dev diaries as often as we can every few months. And that was our dev diary outlining a few things. Uh, you know, I invite you to check out our YouTube channel, which is Torn Banner, uh, Torn Banner Studios. And you can watch that in slow motion and go through all of the, the clips and stuff. Obviously, uh, there's a couple of new maps shown in there. One of those being Hippodrome. And uh, Hippodrome is basically the Tenoshian Empire version of Tournament Ground. So it's this wide open field and it's very horse centric. Um, you can see one of our artists on his tablet uh, kind of riding around on his horse and working on the the grandstands of all the the peasants standing up there and watching the the turmoil there's actually um i encourage you to go check it out but there's also some other little details about the map you know certain types of traps and that kind of thing uh it's very half tournament grounds half fighting pit with horses and it's going to be super duper chaotic and that is hippodrome the other map we have in there uh, doesn't have a name, a public name quite yet. You guys saw some snow, some ice. Uh, you could jump to some conclusions about maybe what kind of things we'll be able to do on there. You know, with ice comes some dangerous things that could happen, if you catch my drift. <laughs> uh, could be cold, could definitely be wet and cold. <laughs> uh, uh, so Hippodrome will be our next upcoming map, and then the snow map. And then uh, as well, we have the Katars, which is the, the blade weapon you saw one of our artists working on um, that you'll be able to stab people with. And that's pretty exciting. Um, in addition uh, to the 2.6 map, new weapon, we also have new progression features uh, that have not yet been seen in game. So we hope that you guys look forward to that. We're going to be having some more details about what exactly progression means, but, you know, get excited. <laughs> uh, basically... Uh, we want to show kind of like the next chapter as I know it's been a little bit quiet since Tenosha and Empire came out in June. Um, we're do we've definitely been heads down trying to bring out new content uh, for 2.6 and 2.7 and uh, we can't wait to share more details about that in the coming future. Uh, the release date for 2.6 is not quite out yet. We're still trying to nail down a few things but once we know we'll definitely share that with you guys uh, as well as uh, the crossplay party support as well. Um, so when we have a date for all that stuff we'll be sure to let you guys know. Now to the the meat of our stream I have a very special guest with me today. Uh, I have JD Spears. I'm going to swap our screen so we can see him. Dun, dun, dun. It's JD! Hey! <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, Jen, how are you? I am so good. I'm glad to be back in front of the stream, and I'm super glad to have you here because um, I am just like somebody who is very into soundtracks, like movies, games. I love it. Uh, um, one of my favorite composers. Uh, Gareth Coker, who did like he does the music for Ark and the music for Ori. Uh, so I, I ever since I found game music, I've been really into kind of tracking things down, and I've been following the stuff that you've been doing and the stuff that you've been sending. And the Silver Two soundtrack is really special. <laughs> hey, everybody in chat. So JD, let's get into the your background. Is that a good place to start? <laughs> Oh, I think he froze. Oh, no. I'm talking to myself now. JD, come back. That's okay. I'll let, I'll give him a few minutes to see if he comes back. Um, but basically, <laughs> JD sent me over some uh, music that I'll be showing you guys uh, for basically when we released our um, launch soundtrack. Uh, that came out with the game. You can actually find it on Spotify. I think you can find it a few other places like Bandcamp and um, basically everywhere that music is sold. You can probably find it. Uh, but uh, we have a basically a new volume coming up that has the Tenosian music. It has like our Christmas music. It has uh, what other special stuff have we done? Uh, some of the Brawl songs. Uh, Basically, it has like 24 different songs on it. Uh, so we'll be able to preview some of those today. <laughs> I'm sorry that JD is frozen. Uh, let me... Oh, hang on. Let me just check real quick. He might be having some internet troubles. Hey, it's me. It's my icon. 
while we're waiting for him to see if he uh, is able to reconnect, I might just play um, some of the songs we were going to play, and hopefully he can tell us uh, about them when he's back. So this is uh, the first one I have for you. Um, and these are temporary names. Um, I think that the team is still deciding on like the final, final versions. Uh, but I will play you Fear Will Only Bring You Death. Unfortunately, I've not heard back from JD yet, <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and play you uh, another song while I try to see if he's having internet issues or if he's able to return. This is Join the Cavalry, um, and this features the, um, if you guys watch the Ryan Buckley stream that was uh, the stream before this one, which would have been four weeks ago, I think. Uh, we showed a video of a, a lady singing, and her, I believe her name, her name is Hayat. Uh, I'm sorry if I got the pronunciation wrong, uh, but she is featured on this track. Unplugged our router. Um, for some reason, he figured out how to do that. Oh, <laughs> so that's what my happened. God. All right, he's four, and yeah, I guess well, that's what happened. 
that's kids for you. <laughs> While you were gone, <laughs> I just played uh, one of the songs. So. <laughs> oh, perfect. perfect. We can we can uh, oh, yeah. revisit some of the other stuff as well while uh, while we have our little chat here. Uh, basically, perfect. I was <laughs> I didn't even know how long you were here for because I was just talking. And then I went to ask you a question, and I noticed that you weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> well, like your voice oh. cut out completely, and I was like, "Oh no, something's something's happened here." Um, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. We can't blame the little four-year-old. He doesn't know what he's doing. No, no, no. <laughs> so let's let's uh, let's get into your stuff. I basically wanted okay. to give you a chance to kind of um, introduce yourself. Uh, you know, talk about your background as a composer in music. Um, basically, any. Yeah pre chivalry two stuff you want to talk about go for it sure yeah so i you know i've been involved in in music in, in some way or another um since i was a little kid i was actually a performer um on stage um uh, you know singing and playing guitar uh, from a very young age um and yeah you know in, in high school i was in rock bands and all that kind of stuff and on into college uh continue to do that and uh, and had some opportunities to even uh, go on tour and, and kind of do that thing for a little bit. And um, uh, it all kind of led to me eventually uh, sort of focusing in on my love for video game music and really pursuing that uh, professionally. Um, and yeah, I've just for the last, boy, I feel like it's been like 15 years or so. <laughs> I've been kind of uh, in some way at least focused on on uh trying to work on 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 projects that uh, that i would enjoy you know playing or watching or whatever it might be and um i've been very fortunate in that i've you know uh sort of gotten to work on bigger and better projects as time has gone on uh which has all kind of led to right here and right now <laughs> working on chivalry too heck yeah um... yeah <laughs> What has been maybe like, what do you like the most about working on Chivalry 2 music? Oh boy, that's a great question. <laughs> you know, I think, I mean, there are just, so, there are so many things I could, I could say. Um, I mean, the game itself has afforded me so many um, opportunities um, mm -hmm. in terms of just like uh, bucket list type things as a composer, I guess. Um, for example, this project is the first one. Uh, in which I was, you know, able to use a, a, a proper, you know, full orchestra uh, to record some of it. And so getting to hear your own music played uh, by a by a full orchestra, uh, you know, live is is pretty, pretty insane. I don't, I don't think I'll ever forget that. And so Chivalry 2 kind of is that is that checkmark for me <laughs> as a composer. So there's a lot of just and, and not to mention just getting to see something that you uh, worked on, you know, and you're contributing to. Uh, the project as a whole meaning a lot to a lot of people and getting to see people enjoy it, uh, not, not just my music, but really just the game as a whole and just knowing that I've contributed to that in some way um, and getting, you know, getting to chat with, with Vans and getting to work with such a talented team. I mean, there are just so many things. I'm sorry, that's not an answer to your question, but that's like a list of <laughs> a list of things. Yes, so many things. I'm totally fine with the list of things. That's totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, yeah. uh, hearing your stuff played live, I imagine. Uh, well, I guess I can't imagine, but that must have been a really cool experience. I actually have a um, video I was playing while you were gone, and I could put it back on. Oh, which is, uh, very cool. From your YouTube channel of the oh yeah um, relics of the Great War being played. So I have that playing up on screen. Um, cool. I think we showed that when Buckley was here as well, but. Uh, it shows a very, very cool perspective of, uh, you know, having something tangible in the real world, I guess, of like uh -huh. hearing, hearing the sounds of the Great War. <laughs> yes. Very cool. <laughs> yes. We got to do that. That that footage is from uh, Budapest, um, oh. a really talented orchestra there um, that we got to do a couple of different sessions with, actually. So, um, yeah, just an absolute privilege for sure. Awesome. So, uh, th as for the Chivalry 2 music as a whole, I was going to ask you kind of like maybe to do a deep dive on what exactly a composer is and what a composer does. Maybe even like 
kind of a, a start to finish of, um, okay, Chivalry 2 needs a song. What happens mm-hmm. when they need a song? Start from there and kind of go to the yeah. end. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I think, you know, it varies project to project and even within a project like Chivalry 2. I mean, you have obviously the in-game stuff, but there's also marketing stuff. And, and so it can kind of vary a little bit. Um, I'd say one thing that um, that was really great about this project is that I feel like we spent a lot of time at the beginning kind of nailing down what the music for Chivalry 2 was going to be. Kind of um, just through going back and forth and using feedback from the team and and everyone, uh, as I was beginning to work on those early pieces, I think we were able to hone in on what we wanted to do and what we didn't want to do um, pretty early on. Uh, and so that makes obviously like, you know, subsequent tasks a lot easier when you sort of have a little bit of a style guide to go off of. Um, so with, with that kind of thing kind of solved um, in some ways, um, most of the time I'm working directly with Ryan, the audio director, um, as you mentioned before. And um, yeah, typically, you know, if, if it's an update, like the Tenosia update, for example, um, he'll have an idea of what, uh, what we need music-wise. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way we've sort of structured, uh, the music in the game is that, you know, there's, there's music assigned to pretty much every map. And of course, if, if you're going to do something like add a faction, uh, you know, the other two factions already have their own sort of musical identity. So it makes sense to, you know, create a whole new set of music for uh, a new faction. So we kind of, you know, we have a list of everything we know we want to do. Uh, and from there, I'm basically reaching out to Ryan and, and bugging him and asking him for as much uh, <laughs> material as he can send me because, you know, usually it's early on. There's not in-game footage of, of this update yet. You know, it's just, it's all still very much in progress. And so, um, you know, I'll usually get access to things like a, uh, basically just like a, a, a brainstorming sheet that everyone else is working off of, you know, that pulls a bunch of references like visual references that they're basing uh, this update or faction or whatever it might be on um you know kind of a uh, a uh, rough history like diving into their lore a little bit um you know pulling things from other media pulling things from actual like historical images things like that um because i love to have that stuff in front of me whenever i'm writing even if it's not anything remotely final i, I find that having something visual in front of me can not only inspire me, but it also kind of keeps me on track. It keeps me from going too far off the beaten path in terms of like what will work for this visually, because at the end of the day, like the music that the players are hearing needs to match up with what they're seeing. Um, And so, and so, yeah, I just, that's kind of my, you know, my strategy is to always have something in front of me. If what I'm writing is going to be used um, in game. Um, And so, yeah, and from there, I'll usually, you know, write what we call mock-ups, which are just sort of almost demo versions of what's going to end up in the game. Um, we'll go back and forth on that in terms of any feedback the team want or any changes the team might want, any feedback they have. Um, and then once all that's addressed and that's kind of approved, at that point, I will record any live instruments that we might be adding to it or replacing sampled instruments with live instruments. Um, That's kind of the final part of the process. And then, of course, mixing and and mastering and and all that. And then it's once again sent off for approval. And then hopefully it ends up in the game at that point. (laughs) I like when you said kind of like a each faction has their own kind of uh, flavor to them. And we have a question in chat from Godric Fick. He wants to know, um, is there distinct instruments that each faction uses or... If not, is there a kind of overarching theme that you kind of dedicate to each faction to make them sound unique? Sure, that's a great question. Uh, yeah, I think I think in some ways you can boil it down to instrumentation uh, in terms of what might distinguish the factions uh, from one another. Um, you know, for Agatha, it's much more sort of a somewhat traditional orchestral uh, approach. Um, mm-hmm. It's very lots of fanfares and things like that. Uh, and for the Masons, everything's a lot, obviously, like darker. But it's more, it's more that it's a lot more percussive uh, and tonal, uh, not as melodic uh, and like hummable, I guess. Um, 
And then um, for Tenosia, it was really interesting. It's, it's really the main element of the Tenosian music. Well, I shouldn't say the main element, but I think the most distinguishable and probably the most important element of their music is uh, is the solo voice. Um, yes. I end- Yeah, so I ended up um, working with this great vocalist. Her name is uh, Hyatt Salim. And she's performed on like Age of Empires and a bunch of other games. And she's a great composer too. Um, and th- actually her voice is so awesome that they created an entire like sample instrument out of it that you can just oh, buy. Wow. I'm like, <laughs> so, awesome. uh, but I reached out and luckily she agreed uh, to, to, uh, to be a part of the project. And she was uh, so great to work with. And she really, I think, elevated everything just beyond what, what it would have been without, without her voice, because that voice really cuts through all of the sound design and everything that's going on in chivalry already. And, and really kind of, you know, makes itself known when it needs to. Uh, so, and it's just, she's just a beautiful singer. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, that's what I would probably put on the Tenosians in terms of something that distinguishes them. Yeah. I have, uh, one of the songs here that she's on, I got, uh, oh, yeah. sort of halfway through it. Uh, while you were gone, but I'd like to play it again. Uh, the name's sure. not final, but this is uh, Join the Cavalry. It's about two minutes. Here we go. Yes. <laughs> things i think is really interesting about um basically music in games and also music in you know in the broader broader sense like musicals and stuff like that is how a song can be very different but also fits the theming very well and like you hear it and you think oh that sounds like chivalry 2 music even though the tenosian music is so much different than the music that uh we've done before i think um you and Buckley, to a greater extent, have done a, a really good job at um, making it sound very unique, but also making it very chivalry, if that makes sense. Um, I think that's something Absolutely. that uh, we try to do generally, especially um, we've had like character artists and stuff on here before about how um, how different Tenoji is from the other factions, but how they seem to fit very co- cohesively into the world. Uh, and I think that uh, the chatters also agree we have Unchosen One says, sick work! And God or Fix doing <laughs> some you. dancing dancing emojis uh, while listening to the music. <laughs> this Thank guy you so Lutz, much. this guy Lutz also says she's almost like a new instrument. Uh, the uh, the singer, which I have to agree. <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. I, I worked with you know actually several soloists 
um, uh, other than Hyatt on this Tenoja music as well. Um, kind of speaking to what you're talking about in terms of it needs to fit in, but also be unique. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I think makes it a little bit unique is that I'm sort of, um, I'm not relying on like big uh, ensembles. I mean, yes, you hear that there's a bunch of orchestra and stuff in that, but in terms of what we recorded live this time, we actually focused on uh, soloists playing some uh, traditional Middle Eastern instruments. And I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, if we were going to do that, that I enlisted the help of people who uh, were experts in those instruments um, Mm -hmm. to get the best result. And also just to be respectful and like, make sure that I'm, you know, leaning on someone else's understanding of what these instruments are capable of. And, um, and so I do think that, that kind of featuring the soloists and sort of, uh, especially in some of the dynamic music, um, that you'll hear when you're playing the Tenoja update, um, it's a little bit, some of it's a little bit more, um, what's the word I'm looking for a little bit more sparse at times. And you might just hear a solo percussionist or someone playing the oud or something like that. And it's very like uh, just to sort of set a mood. Uh, And I think these types of instruments really lend themselves really well to putting you in, um, in (laughs) Tenosia in some ways. Uh, Whereas, you know, you strip those elements back and you keep the orchestral elements, you still kind of have something that might sound like, uh, music for you know one of the launch chivalry maps or something like that uh, but i think kind of mixing in those elements is sort of what allowed it to um, stand on its own as something unique without being too far away from what we were already doing because it still has to fit in with the music that's already there too like for example if the masons win a match against the tenosians it's going to play the masons you know victory music and you don't want that to sound completely foreign to everything else you've just been hearing for the whole match. And so, yeah, you definitely have to keep those things in mind whenever you're doing an update that takes you to a new setting, I think. For sure. Uh, You mentioned dynamic music, and you also mentioned about Mm -hmm. how each of the maps has their own music. Um, I'm sure people notice it in game, but maybe don't realize how many different stingers you know full length songs are actually in the game because you have the warm-up music obviously we have the main menu music the victory music the stage engine music the faction specific Mm -hmm. music you know all of the dynamic music that's in chivalry 2 it's a lot of different songs (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know uh i can't remember how many tracks were in the first uh but the one you're working on uh the working list has 24 on there uh so it's you know it's not an insignificant volume of songs to really make everything cohesive but also individual at the same time uh is there any yeah i think kinda... there's go ahead go ahead oh sorry i was just gonna say i think i think that we're over two hours of music at this point um as far as what's possible to hear in the game <laughs> so yeah i was gonna say is there any um trends that you normally follow when doing um some of the music that's used in specific places like um for example the stage ending music versus the warm-up music you know are there trends that those types of songs have that you normally follow yeah uh sure so things like the both the warm-up music which the warm-up music for those who might not know that's all i think every map uh pretty much every map has its own warm-up music and um that's the music that'll play right at the beginning of the match right when it starts and depending on what map you're on, you you know, there might be like a battle speech at the beginning. And so essentially the music is there to sort of underscore that, or it might launch right into the action. And it's just something kind of uh, a little bit more high octane that fits the match. And then it sort of subsides. uh, uh, And then the stage ending music is similar uh, in that it kicks in, you know, when there's two minutes left or when the match is almost over uh, to sort of let everyone know, hey, this is it's coming down to the wire here. And again, it kind of kicks up the uh, energy level quite a bit um, whenever those tracks kick in. Uh, and then the dynamic music that's sort of uh, playing the rest of the time, uh, it it was designed sort of to stay below that those two energy levels, so that those could sort of be the peaks on either side. Uh, and the rest of the the rest of the music, the music is really there to sort of just set uh, again, just sort of set a mood, kind of kind of keep you in the setting, stay kind of out of the way of all of the amazing you know sound design that's already going on in, in Chivalry Two, um, but it's still there and it's still enough to kind of uh, 
uh, again, create a vibe. Um, and it does have sort of its ebbs and flows. Sometimes it gets a little bit more high energy, but for the most part, it's kind of staying below the energy of something like the track you just heard. Um, and, uh, what's cool about that music. And I think it's probably, um, the most fun I've had working on music for chivalry Two. this dynamic music, uh, because it was such a learning experience, um, uh, getting kind of really into the weeds here. So there are four layers, uh, of, uh, audio that make up one of these dynamic tracks. And so it's one long piece of music that's uh, split up into four layers. And so the, the very base layer is super, super ambient. There's very little going on. You might not even notice it's there. Um, there's some little accents here and there, but it's, it's very, very sparse. And, you know, the layer that could come on top of that, a little bit more going on and so on and so forth until it's like the full-fledged piece of music. Uh, and that's tied to the progression of the match. Um, so the music kind of reacts to how, you know, how far the advancing team is, is getting. Um, and it was just a complete, I mean, I've done interactive music and things like that before, but, but not in layers like this. And this was, uh, just such a, such a unique way to have to think about writing music because, you know, these layers kind of have to both exist on their own as well as, um, you know, serve the larger piece of music that they're technically a part of. Um, and so when you're writing just like the stage ending music, for example, which is just a two minute, you know, stereo piece of music, like I have complete control over what the player is going to hear because they're just going to hear that stereo file at the right time. Uh, but in this case, it's like, it depends on what's going on in the match. And so um, there was just a lot, uh, I, I found myself, spending a lot more time on like the detail work and things like that, because some of these elements that wouldn't have normally been exposed uh, to the player um, were going to just be exposed. And so, um, yeah, it's just a really fun, fun way to work and to think in layers like that. And, you know, we learned as we went to, I mean, the dynamic music that you hear in the game, even from the, the uh, non Tenosia maps, uh, sounds a bit different now than it did when it first got put in the game because we kind of learned like what's mm -hmm. what's working like we thought it would was you know what's not working as well as we hope you know that kind of thing and we've adjusted it since then and so it's just been a really fun fun learning experience to work on that dynamic music for sure yeah to the point of the dynamic music i remember um during the like public tests that we used to do very early on before the game was released we noticed mm -hmm. that um some people were streaming and playing the game and they would have their own music playing. Yeah. Uh, and we right. were like, dang, this sounds, this sounds good. Like we should have music going all the time. And that's kind of where <laughs> dynamic music uh -huh. uh, was born was seeing right. the way that the players were interacting with the game and had this, had this desire to have this epic, you know, medieval theming going on. <laughs> um, and I think that kind of goes to all of the music in the game is, uh, as a whole, because Chivalry 2 is really trying to give people this cinematic experience, and um, obviously music mm -hmm. is a part of that in a big way, whether you are, are noticing it or kind of unconsciously just vibing to the music as you're playing. Yeah. Uh, it, it The right. dynamicness really plays uh, a part in the, the story of the match and the story of the games. Um, mm -hmm. It could... Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like yeah. it makes it more impactful and like your your blood starts pumping when you hear that sound kick up at the end if you're about to lose mm -hmm. or you're about to win you're like yeah I can feel it because <laughs> the music's right, right there along with me. <laughs> yeah, well that's good. I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad it's it's working somewhat. That's it's great no, to hear. I think it definitely is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, somebody in chat says the ending part of the theme is so good. I love hearing it when a game starts getting down to the last minute. And I have to agree. I love it too. Well, I appreciate that. I really do. I actually think <laughs> um, I think my favorite thing that we've that we've done for it so far, and I have like a lot of favorites, but um, I think if I had to pick one thing, it would probably be duty and honor too. Um, uh, which isn't my, my comp, isn't my work. It's, it's Ryan's work that I did my own version of for this game. Um, but I think that like, you know, when you're coming in to work on a, a sequel where you, and you didn't do the, the music for the first game, obviously they're going to be expectations 
uh, and things that that, pe- that fans of the first game are going to want to hear. And the question is like, how much of that do you do? And then how much of that do you make all of this your own and, and all of that? And um, one thing that I don't think was a question is that we, we wanted to do uh, duty in order to uh, do a new version of that because of how much people loved that from the first game. And so I'm just really happy with how that turned out. And it's meant a lot to me that players uh, and fans of, of uh, medieval warfare um, have been, you know, so kind to reach out and be vocal about how much they appreciate that we, that we put that in the game and that also that they're happy with my, my take on it. So um, that's been the, probably one of the coolest experiences is getting to sort of take something that people already love and do it justice, I guess. Oh yeah. Uh, earlier in the chat, there's a couple of people that are saying duty and honor for the win. Uh, Cause they, everybody <laughs> just loves that track. And uh, you mentioned you worked with, worked with Ryan on that one. Uh, the, the first duty and honor for those who may not have played chivalry one uh that song was originally in that and then we mm-hmm. have this this brand new version duty and honor two uh which is on the the first chivalry two of official soundtrack original soundtrack i think it's original yes original. Original, yeah. <laughs> but, well it doesn't uh, either way yeah <laughs> it's both but uh <laughs> that track is on there uh it's on youtube it's on spotify if, if for some reason you haven't heard it which seems unlikely but you know, <laughs> it is there. I know that's definitely a fan favorite. Um, everybody thinks For it's sure. very epic. And uh, I definitely, I'm glad you brought it up because I wanted to bring it up just because I knew the fans were going to ask about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably what I get asked about the most. So I'm, I'm glad that, again, I'm just glad that it's, you know, it's, it's resonated with people. <laughs> awesome. Now, um, I did want to kind of pick your brain a little bit more about... Um, the Tenosian update specifically, as I know that there was a lot of music written specifically for that update because we had to basically, you know, start from scratch uh, because there is an, an entirely new faction. Um, I was curious to ask if, um, and this can kind of go for like the game as a whole, but was there any challenges that you or uh, the audio team in general came up with when it came to developing the feel of Tenosia? Um, because it is so different and there's a lot mm-hmm. of different different instruments that we're not used to. Uh, was there any challenges that you guys came across that you had to work through? Well, um, I mean, there definitely are always, you know, going to be challenges that present themselves. Um, I think, uh, you know, probably the biggest one is something that I already mentioned, which was figuring out, okay, how is this going to be unique, but also not, you know, completely foreign to the chivalry universe in terms of like, it needs to fit in with the rest of the music. Like we already talked about, that was probably the, uh, the most daunting thing, I guess. Um, and then, you know, the other thing was, um, a lot of these traditional, you know, middle Eastern instruments, um, they, uh, they, you know, they, not only do they have very distinct sounds to them, but, um, they're hard to, in my opinion, recreate authentically with just sample libraries. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I knew that, you know, we needed to have real players where we could on, on these instruments. And um, this isn't so much a challenge, but it was some, uh, more of an opportunity that kind of presented itself uh, as I was working on this, which is um, a lot of these players, um, what I would end up doing is I would basically send them the materials and then we would do remote sessions. So I would be here in my studio producing them wherever they might be um, and, and going through everything with them. And uh, they would basically be playing to the, the mock-ups or the guide tracks that I'd already made. And I basically have them do it a few times, you know, the way that I, that I kind of had it, imagined it in my head and the way that it was written on the chart uh but then we would spend a lot of time with me just saying okay let's play the guide track and then you just improvise around it and just do whatever you do whatever you feel and just don't worry about it don't you know just just go crazy um and so that ended up i think producing a lot of um uh kind of a lot of um uh, happy accidents i guess <laughs> Yeah. Where like they would just they would just kind of play something that you know that was off the top of their head, and I would think that's way better than what I had charted. We're gonna let's use that instead, <laughs> um, because again, these people are 
they're experts in these instruments. It's what they've sort of dedicated themselves to, right? And so they're obviously going to know more about how to make it sound awesome than I am as someone who's familiar with the instruments and, and knows the the flavor that it can bring to uh, the project. But at the same time, they're just going to know more about how to get to uh, kind of the, the, the goal on that. So um, there's a lot of improvisation on this, uh, on this Tenosia music, especially in some of the dynamic music and just, then just sort of riffing and, me just letting them go and then me taking sort of the best sections of the best takes of all of that and comping it together into something cohesive. But um, I give those, you know, those soloists so much credit for really bringing that music to life in a way that, again, we didn't really plan for. It was just something that kind of, kind of happened. So I'm very thankful for that. That was actually something that Buckley mentioned uh, when we talked to him was basically how he would send some material and stuff and you would just, go out and find all these really incredible musicians and he was always yeah. surprised at uh, how you, how you yeah. found them first of all and then obviously <laughs> the quality that came from it uh, so yeah. that's that's really interesting to hear <laughs> yeah well yeah and they were they were tons of fun to work with and they were all very down to you know basically try whatever and <laughs> um, but yes I was very fortunate I feel like you know I didn't you know it, it wasn't hard to find really talented people. It's, it's cool to, uh, one of the good things about the, the era that we kind of live in right now is that it's, you know, um, it, it, whether you're a composer or whether you're in some other field, like it's pretty easy to network with other people in those fields. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you need someone who plays a particular instrument, that's maybe not as common or something like that. Like it's, it's, it's just, it's a little easier to do today than I think it might've been if we were making this game, you know, 30, 40 years ago or something like that. So yeah, for um, sure. People are a lot more connected now. (laughs) Right. Well, and the ability to record remotely like this, I mean, these musicians, they were all over the world. If I were limited to musicians that were here, um, you know, close to where I live, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have worked out the same way. So, um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm thankful to be making music in this time. I'll say that for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think we have a, a more of a goofy question, which was uh, somebody asking if you had done the, the music for the instruments in game, which I don't think you did. I did not. No. Yeah. I just wanted to answer <laughs> it because he, he asked a couple of times. Uh, you know, we have the harp yes. and the recorder and all that fun stuff in game right. as well. But I do think it would be cool uh, sometime in the future if like, um, this is something I think like Sea of Thieves does, where if a, if a couple people get together and play an instrument, it'll play a song. Uh, I think that would be fun. Yes, that, sometime. that would be really cool. That would be really cool. <laughs> I, um, I'm planting the, the seed closest, in your brain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that sounds like a great idea. The closest thing I think that I've done, I mean, and not, you know, more like the closest thing stylistically, I guess, was the music for the Brawl uh, update. Um, yeah. And so that's just more of like, what could be considered like in in world music like you could imagine it existing like actually like in those in that dining hall where the brawl is happening <laughs> um and so that was a lot of fun to work on uh in that it was very different from the rest of the music um in the game but yeah i the the actual instruments that you could pick up that's all that's all um uh, that's all ryan i believe yeah <laughs> they're saying they want to see you uh ripping on that harp uh, that's what Seabot <laughs> says, and then uh, Goderfix says uh, that we need to add an electric guitar so you can show us your rock skills. <laughs> yeah, I mean that would probably be one of the few things I'm, I would be qualified to pick up and play. <laughs> if you gave me a harp, I, I don't know what I'd try to make sense of it. I guess, <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, that I'm all for that. Let's do it. But it needs to be like a medieval uh, style. Like it needs to be an electric guitar, but it needs to look like they built it out of stuff. Absolutely. That exists in the world. <laughs> uh, chat, we have about 10 minutes left. If you have any questions specific to uh, our guest JD or about the music of Chivalry 2, I'm going to give you a few minutes to kind of get those questions out. Uh, I do want to go back and play um, the other song on our list, which uh, its temporary name is Fear Will Only Bring You Death. Uh, And I'm going to play that for you right now while you guys write your questions.
that's that. I I don't know if uh you guys have nailed it down yet on uh, if you're not allowed to say it, that's okay. Uh, on when our our <laughs> next batch of music is releasing, I know we're working on it. Obviously, uh, sometimes it has not. <laughs> it has it hasn't been nailed down yet. I don't. Okay. I, I'm gonna just. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know what. I honestly don't know what I can say about it. No, that's to be fine. Honest with you. But if you're hey, if you're saying it's in the works, then you're. I mean, I'm gonna trust. Oh, I'm gonna yeah, trust I, you. I think, we're all, safe to say that. You. Yeah, yeah. You can put it on me. <laughs> it's safe to say that obviously we want to release more Chivalry Two music officially. Yeah. Uh, but no, no yes, firm. We are working on on, on all yeah. of that right now. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you'll hear something soon. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna look through these. I had. Um, one man standing said they'd like to hear something Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves inspired, because uh, they think that mm. would fit well into chivalry. And then um, someone else Great said uh, this 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 guy Lute said the human singing really makes this something else. Uh, I think everybody's a fan of of uh, is it Hyatt Hyatt Hyatt, Hyatt. yeah H A Y A T Saloon is her last name. Uh, yeah, you can just. Google her and see all the awesome stuff she's she's doing. So. Yeah, we had a we had a recording of her singing uh, that we showed mm. once before as well, which is awesome. I have uh, kind of like my own question for you is, um, okay. I think Chivalry Two is kind of uh, if it follows certain themes, but at the same time, it's also a little bit of anything goes as long as it fits into mm -hmm. those certain themes. Uh, is there any kind of uh, music that you'd like to explore in the world of Chivalry 2 that you haven't gotten the chance to yet? Anything come to mind? Hmm. Oh, boy. I know, it's a broad question. Well, I I think, you know, it, it, it would depend on, you know, getting to do the Tenosia stuff has my mind, like, racing in terms of, like, again, please do not take this as any kind of <laughs> a speculation or, con or confirmation <laughs> of what, what's coming. I, I have no idea. I know as much as all of you do. But uh, but but even just um, you know different types of factions that might warrant uh, their own styles of music like you know who knows Vikings showguns oh, they, there's yeah. so many you know just getting to do getting to sort of explore like how what other you know uh, cultures can we can we sort of explore and uh, add those elements to to chivalry music and sort of uh, in the same way that we did for Tenosha. I think that, that could be just a fun road to go down in general. Yeah, I think so too. I think, uh, you know, obviously not confirming or saying anything, <laughs> but uh, exploring yeah. more worldly music. I think having mm -hmm. Tenosha as a faction has really opened the doors for, you know, expanding the worldly view. Uh, and there's, the, you know, there's a lot of space on, on our map. It's not all belonging to Agatha. You know, there's other regions right. in the world of Shivari too that we can always explore. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So that, that idea is exciting for sure. Yeah. That possibility. Uh, somebody in chat says next DLC exposed. There is no, there's no <laughs> next DLC. I'm just going to deny that yeah. outright. There's no yes. next DLC. Uh, <laughs> all our content updates are free. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah <laughs> whatever it is it will be free yeah so that's you can convert we have a, <laughs> uh, a question from han solo cups uh we've talked a little bit about it but they wanted to know um uh, what inspiration did you use for the tenosha soundtrack like was there other media that you kind of consumed or anything along that line? um it was just it was a little bit of a of a um of a hodgepodge i mean uh i um the team had sent me some references that they liked, and then I gathered some stuff that I really liked um, and kind of, you know, put it together in a Google Doc and sent it over. And we kind of went back and forth on the elements we liked about that stuff, uh, kind of the direction we wanted to go. I think um, the main thing that we sort of wanted to stick with on it was to stay, much like the rest of the show we're music, to stay very organic, uh, make sure it sounds like, you know, real people playing, like not a lot of overt, like sound design elements or synth uh, synthesizers and things like that. Like try to keep it, um, you know, again, just really, really organic and, and, and uh, tangible, I guess. So, um, but yeah, I mean, there were all kinds of, of scores that I love that, that bring in these kinds of elements. Like I really, I really love the music from Uncharted 3. I don't know if you guys remember that from way back 
when that came out. <laughs> um, but uh, that that score just brings in so many uh, so many cool instruments that like a lot of people probably you know, playing games in the states anyway had, had, hadn't heard. Um, and so I don't know. There, I mean, that's just one example of the many that that I that I sent over. But uh, uh, I think for me, at the end of the day, the inspiration is ultimately like what I'm seeing in front of me and um, mm -hmm. what the faction looks like and what their what their culture is and what their history is and making sure I'm sort of representing that accurately and authentically for sure. Yeah. There's a couple, a couple uh, more sillier suggestions for you. If I don't, if I don't <laughs> answer it, he's he's gonna be really sad. Uh, oh, Chronic no, Mayhem fine, is suggesting that uh, we implement the slide whistle, and I saw there was another mm. request for a kazoo, which made me think of. Um, uh, I think it's Fa uh, Phaedrid's dance. It's more of a like. Dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, oh yeah. you know? yes. That <laughs> actually think, might have worked yeah. a slide whistle anyway. Yeah. yeah. Might have worked in that. I feel like that fits I, the brawl theme a little bit better than, you know, uh, stage ending music, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. I do own uh, two kazoos, so be careful what you wish for. Oh, my, oh no. This... <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to be on the lookout for it now. <laughs> uh, I just I want to take a couple minutes at the end of the stream here um, just to go back at the, the our update stuff. Um, so I just wanted to let everybody know in chat that we are working on our next update, which is update 2.6. Uh, we're going to be um, sharing a release, date, a release date for that, not today, um, but as soon as we're able to. Um, the stuff that we talked about at the beginning of the stream, the stuff that's featured in the Dev Diary, uh, you know, Hippodrome, Qatar, that kind of stuff, that'll all be included in 2.6. And uh, we'll be able to share more about that update uh, very, very soon, as well as uh, cross-play party, cross party update stuff. That'll all be coming really soon. Um, I know things have been a little bit quiet uh, since the Tenosian Invasion update came out, and there hasn't been a lot of stuff going on, uh, but we've definitely been heads down. Uh, chugging along and uh, I look forward to seeing what kind of music is going to be coming up in these these maps we're working on as well. We have the, the Hippodrome and the snow map coming up uh, so that's going to be exciting. <laughs> sure. Uh, so I just want to say thanks everybody in chat for joining us. Obviously thank you for JD or thank you to JD for joining us today. Uh, it's really exciting to get to talk about the, the music. Uh, the music is uh, personally, something I care a lot about. I really like soundtracks, both games, movies. Uh, music holds a, a big spot in my heart, so it was fun for me to get to talk about it. And I, I, I hope you had a good time as well. <laughs> I had a great time. This is my first time ever on Twitch, so I, oh. I had a really good time. <laughs> uh, we try to keep so things, you know, keep things casual, <laughs> keep things educational. Try to answer as many questions as we get from chat. We just have a good time here. <laughs> well, I appreciate you having me, really. And thanks, everybody, for watching, too. Yeah, thank you, everybody, in the Twitch chat. We're going to wrap it up now. It's 3 o'clock, and I am going to leave you... Um, you know what? I'll leave you with Phaedra's Dance for our ending song. Uh, and we'll catch you uh, in two weeks from now with another developer live stream. Thank you, guys. Bye!